and welcome back to the channel so in this video we are going to be building this cut painting here to learn intermediate css so this is part of the free code camp responsive web design curriculum and this is a new portion of the curriculum that free code camp recently added okay so we're going to work through steps 82 steps all right and let's get started with step one okay so the very first thing we want to do is we want to declare a doc type now this doc type is going to tell the browser what kind of document you want it to read so this is how you write it you bring an exclamation mark and then you write doc type then you give it an attribute of html which tells the browser that this is an html document that we want it to read next up let's add our html elements like so and then the next thing we want to do is we want to give the html element a lang attribute of en so this will set the default language of our page to english and then we also want to add a head and body elements so let's add a head element like so and then we are also going to add a body element like so okay all right let's move on to step two so within the head element we want to add a meta tag and This meta tag is going to have an attribute of char set. We want to give it a value of utf-8. And then we also want to add a title element like so. And let's give it FCC cut painting. All right. Now, we want to add a link to link our style sheet where we'll be writing our CSS to our HTML. So we do that by using the link element. So we write it like so. And then we give the link, sorry, the link element is a self-closing element. So we don't need a closing tag. Okay, so we say link like so, then we write rel which is the attribute, and then the value is going to be style sheet. We also give it an href attribute. The value is going to be the name of our CSS file. In this, in this case, it's going to be styles.css. All right. Now, let's move on to step four. So with step four, we want to use the universal selector to add a border a box sizing property with a value of border box okay so the universal selector is this the star here this is going to select all elements on the page and you're going to say box sizing and we say border box okay so what it's going to do is that it's going to ensure elements including pardon and border in their include pardon and border in their specified width and height all right, so for step five, let's give our body element. So we select body like so, bring our curly braces, and we want to give it a background color of this right here. So I'll copy the hex code, and then I'll paste it here. Okay, as you can see, our background color has been applied. Okay, on to the next one. Now we are back in the HTML. And inside the HTML, we want to create a main element, okay? So we create a main element like so. And then inside that main element, we want to add a diff. So we add a diff element like so. And for the diff element, we want to give it a class of cut head. So we say cut head like so. All right. Then we'll move on to the next step. So using a class selector so a class selector is we use it by saying dot so we want to give the cut element so we say dot cut head we want to give it a width of 250 
no 205 sorry 205 pixels we also want to give it a height of 180 pixels and then let's also give it a border of one pixel solid and let's say zero 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 which is black okay so as you can see we have our border around our cut head element and we also want to give it a border radius of 60 which is going to transform this from a square into a more rounded shape so we'll say 46 percent all right as you can see we have a more rounded shape okay so moving on to step eight to see the cut head element we want to give it a linear gradient background with this color here so let's start we'll say background and then we want to give it a linear gradient so we use the linear gradient function and then we'll say 5e 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 then we'll say 85 percent bring our comma and then let's add a second color of four five four five f four five four five four f so it's four five four five four f and then we also want to add hundred percent like so okay so before i check the code i want to point out something some people have been having some issues with step eight okay so it seems there's a bug with it but what is happening is that when you write your code like this if you put them on a separate line and you try to check the code it will not pass okay ordinarily this should pass but it seems there's some sort of a bug with the free code camp question so uh, somebody has submitted an issue i think it will be looked into so until that happens what you want to do is you want to put all of your code for step eight on one line like so if everything is on one line like so then your code will pass and then you can move on with the next steps okay so take note of that if you are working on it all right so now let's move on and let's talk about css positioning so css positioning positioning basically lets you know how you want an element to be positioned in the browser and the position property has all of these values static absolute relative sticky and fixed so in the next couple of steps we'll be looking at these values one by one all right so let's look at the position property <coughs> of an element with that property which is position you can move elements around by setting a pixel or a percentage value for one of the top right left or bottom properties okay so let's start with static static is the default positioning for all elements so if you have a element like our cat, cat head element and we don't have any position property on it then by default it's a static okay and what this means is that you won't be able to move it around with the top right left and bottom values so let's try that we'll give our cut head we already have our cut head selected here so we'll give it a position of static let's also give it a top value of 100 pixels and a left value of 100 pixels and as you can see nothing happens ordinarily when you give these top and left values it should affect the positioning of the element but because it has a position of static these top and left values we've added here is not affecting it in any way all right so let's move on so for step number 10 like i was saying you could see that nothing happens the cut head element did not move despite setting a top and left of 100 pixels each but that's not the case with relative positioning when you use relative the relative value the element is still positioned according to the normal flow of the document but these 
top and left values will become active so that means they will be affecting or changing the position okay so now what we want to do is we want to change this from static and we want to make it relative and as you can see when i make it relative this position changes so now let's do 200 and you see it moves further to the bottom let's do 300 it keeps moving 400 500 as you can see now let me also add a position left of let's say 300 and you see it keeps moving all right let's set it back to 100 for each okay now for step 11 the next position we want to look at is the absolute position and when you use absolute position the element is taken out of the normal flow of the document okay and then the position will be determined by the values you give for top left bottom and right okay so let's set this cut head from relative to absolute okay and then set the top and left properties to any pixel value so let's just say this will be let's say 300 let's just give this 400 all right as you can see we are able to change the positioning with the top and left values okay now for step 12 let's look at the fixed position and for the fixed position we want to it, it, it lets us make an element fix on the page no matter where the user scrolls okay so let's try it out and see how it works so for us to try it out we have to add some new markup so inside our html where we are now want to create a new div okay and then let's give it a class of box all right next up let's use a class selector to give the box element we just created a width of 200 pixels so we say box bring our curly braces we say width 200 pixels let's give it a height of 600 pixels let us also give it a background color with a value of 000 and then let's give it a position of absolute okay all right and then let's also give it a top value of 800 pixels a left value of 650 pixels okay yeah as you can see there you have it our black box is hiding here on the bottom left bottom right sorry that's because we are pushing it 800 pixels away from the top and then 60 50 pixels away from the left okay now we have a position here of relative <clears throat> want to replace the position property of the cut head which we have here and instead of having it as relative we want to have it as fixed so let's change this and say fixed and then leave both top and left as they are okay after that scroll down to see how the fixed value works so let's scroll and as you can see when we scroll we scroll till we reach the black box here but this cut head we have here is not moving and the reason why it's not moving is because the position is fixed okay all right let's continue all right the last position property value is sticky sticky positioning is a hybrid of relative and fixed positioning and it allows an element to stick to a specific position within its containing elements or viewport based on the scroll position 
okay so let's try it out and see how it works so once you change the position of cut head from fixed to sticky okay then let's also set a top value of zero so we just say zero and then let's remove the left value so let's remove the left value here all right now if you scroll up after that you see that the cut head gets stuck to the top uh sorry sorry guys i went back to the next the la the, the previous step so once again let me change this to static no sticky sorry sticky let's give this a zero value let's also give this zero and then no let's remove the left okay all right you should now center the cut head so let's give the cut head element a position property set to absolute okay so we set this to absolute and then set a value of zero for right left top and bottom so we already have top so let's set right to zero let's set left zero as well and then finally bottom will be zero okay and then we also want to set margin as o2 on all sides so we say margin zero sorry no zero margin o2 all right now this centers our cut head both vertically and horizontally okay now the next thing we want to do is remove the div element with a class of box which we use to see how the fixed position work we don't need it anymore okay we also want to remove the styles that we added since we don't need it anymore and then for step 19 once you start working on the cut here so as a reminder this is what we are building okay so once you start working on the year so what we are going to do is inside the cut head element we want to create a diff element with class of cut es so we'll say diff and let's give it a class of cut es okay and then finally inside the cut es element which we have right here i want to create two divs with the classes cut left here and then cut right here so i'm going to create the first div which is going to have a class of cut left ear and then i'm just going to copy it paste it below like so and then change the left to right so it's going to be cut right here like so all right so that's step 20 and this is why i'm going to end this video so in the next one we are going to look at step 21 all the way to step 40 all right so thanks a lot for watching be sure to like and subscribe to the channel and see you in the next one bye bye